I'm back. <laughs> yeah, gonna help myself there. All right, so now that I've covered up part one with the plot, Andrew Brenner's writing, Mark Morgan's narrating, now we'll finally get to the characters, and I think the voice. We'll, we'll see what happens. All right, so uh, here are the characters that I've covered up. The characters I'm gonna be talking about are Thomas, Percy, and James, all as a tag team. Gordon and Spencer, and yes, the new characters, which are Sir Robert Narnby, the Earl, Millie, Connor and Caitlin, and last, I'll save Stephen as the special attraction in this movie. <laughs> yeah, and I was reading this off of a guideline, so I won't get, you know, sidetracked or any, oh, excuse me, anything. <laughs> Alright, so let's get on with Thomas, Percy, and James. Yeah, why did you think I had them up for this for the review? <laughs> Yep, so Thomas, Percy, and James are all the main character in this. Well, not really all the main, just they all share the lead role, which I think is actually brought on really well. Yeah. I mean, seeing these guys, you know, all having the lead role is awesome and hell. I mean, Thomas, Percy, and James are actually one of my favorite trios in the Thomas the Tank Engine franchise. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, of course, others are Gordon, James, and Henry... Or Thomas, Percy, and Toby. Or, well, yeah, I think you get the point. Yeah, and Thomas, Percy, and James are actually one of my favorite trios out there in the show. I mean, the way they all, they all share the role together is good, because considering the fact that Thomas, Percy, and James are also the main characters of the series. Yeah. I mean, and what's also interesting is that, thanks to Andrew Brenner's writing... All the characters now have their original personalities back. Yeah, they're finally back in character. Thank God. <laughs> like, here are the examples. Percy's no longer a complete wimp. Not a total... Well, I mean, he's not a complete baby slash complete idiot. Yeah, like he's no longer a blithering idiot. He's finally back to being naive. And, of course, like he would ask questions at time to time. But hey, it's Percy. I mean... Wouldn't he actually do that? I mean, hell, he is the youngest member of the family. I mean, like, I'm, I'm glad that he's not so juvenile as he was back in, you know, really shitty episodes like um, Percy's New Friends or um, Percy's Parcel or Up, Up, and Away. And trust me, those are a few of the episodes that I absolutely hate. Because Percy, of course, as you remember... In, you know, the from season 8 to season 16, was a complete idiot who was always asking way too many questions, and of course, a complete baby. But now, we finally get back to, to Percy now being really mature. Well, actually, just a little more. Well, he's a little naive, but he's still very mature. I mean, of course, he's very clever like he used to be. Of course, he's still very cheeky, he's very innocent, and that's what I like about him. Besides, I mentioned that Percy was my favorite character in the show. <laughs> then there's James. James's personality is also brought on really well. He's an asshole in this movie. But hey, it's James. He's supposed to be an asshole. I mean, that's the way we like him. I mean, James, of course, is... He's not always... Well, he actually does care about his pain, but he also... When at the part where Percy and Thomas show up at Brendan Docks, James actually wants to take the train all by himself regardless... And, of course, he even go back to being how stubborn he used to be, where he actually backs onto the train and immediately couples on, ready to leave. Wow, what a douchebag. <laughs> but, don't worry, James is a lovable douchebag. I mean, he's, of course, really conceited. He's, he's always complaining. I mean, he always wants to do things his way. And, of course, he also doesn't like it, you know, when tank engines are always getting in the in the way. And that's, I mean, that is awesome. I mean, these three are, you know, also three of my favorite characters in the show, too. I mean, just seeing how, you know, douchey that James was, seeing how vain and arrogant that he used to be is awesome. And now, Thomas. Yeah, it's finally great to see that Thomas is not... You know, a completely dumb idiot, you know, that acts like a, like a know-it-all, you know, who just wants to do things right. <sighs> I mean, in season 17, just to spoil it, 
I mean, we don't see Thomas getting that many episodes, no. I mean, in this, Thomas is not a know-it-all in the... I mean, Tom... Well, here's what I'm going to say. He's not an idiot in this. Thomas isn't really that selfish as he used to be. Hell, he's not really... You know, he's not acting like, you know, a know-it-all. Like saying, I can... I know how to do this. I mean, that's great. I mean, he makes a few mistakes here and there. But the mistake, you know, he does make where he tells Stephen about his secret... I mean, his secret job. I mean, that is actually really... That's really tolerable because, I mean, we all want to make, I mean, we all want people to be happy in our lives. And Thomas, of course, I mean, hey, we all make mistakes, and that's what Thomas used to do. I mean, that's what I like. And, of course, is Thomas cheeky in this movie? Oh, absolutely. He's really cheeky as he used to be. Thanks to Andrew Brenner, Thomas is finally back to being a cheeky and fussy little tank engine. That we all know and love. I mean, he's still kind-hearted, though. And that's what I like. But I'm just so glad that he's back to being a cheeky little engine. Yep. Oh, yeah, speaking of Andrew Brenner's writing, there's something I forgot to cover up in part one. Yeah. I mean, what I forgot to cover up is also that, thanks to Andrew Brenner, that, you know, his, since his writing, you know, is even better than Sharon's, he also managed to cover up all the original plot holes that Sharon Miller created through eight, season 8 to season 16. Yeah, that's right. The plot holes that Sharon created are gone, baby. Yeah, sorry if I came up like that. <laughs> but one prime example of this is that is the scene at Napford Station where the engines are wondering about what the Earl's really planning to do with all the supplies he's getting. And then Toby shows up and tells him, you know, Henry's broken down. And Gordon's like, oh, please. This better not be a special coal again. No, Gordon. It's really his safety... Oh, sorry, yeah, like, here's what I'm going to say. No, Gordon. That problem has been fixed years ago. He just burst the safety belt. <laughs> and that really put a big smile on my face. They actually were able... He actually was able to fix up the original plot hole. I mean, referencing season one, I mean, Henry... I mean, they actually fixed up that problem. I mean... Henry no longer, Henry no longer takes, I'm sorry, Henry no longer takes that stupid Welsh coal anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty much the one plot hole I can remember that he covered up. There's a lot of plot holes that Andrew fixed in season 17. But right now, the plot of Henry, you know, not taking special coal anymore. Thank you, Andrew Brenner. Thank God. All right, now back to the characters. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I just, I forgot about that last part, and I just wanted to, you know, clear it up. All right, so now back to the characters. Now we get to Gordon and Spencer. I mean, these guys have their original personalities, too. Well, Spencer, of course, was always a douchebag, and I still, you know, hate him at times. But his model's still nice, and don't get me wrong, I'll still plan to buy a Bachman model soon. <laughs> yeah, but Gordon, of course, is back to being, you know, territorial and... Also, pompous about other things besides the Express, and, and, yeah, that's what I dislike. I mean, that's all I could say. I mean, Gordon's back to being, well, Gordon. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I still love that, oh, the indignity, catchphrase. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seeing the fact that Gordon and Spencer, I'm just, you know, so glad, you know, that Gordon and Spencer were able to return to, you know, the rivalry from Season 7 from the episode Gordon and Spencer, and no longer Thomas and Spencer. <laughs> yeah, seeing these two as rivals again is awesome. Alright, so now that I finally got rid of that part, now let's get to the new characters. Alright, so now we'll start off with Sir Robert Narnby, the Earl of Sodor. Mike Grady really does a good job at doing the voice of this guy, and I gotta say, he is not only awesome, but he's hilarious. I mean, he's one of the best new human characters that was introduced. I'm serious, like, his personality is brought on really well of being this really friendly and this really, you know, enthusiastic and at the same time really eccentric but fun-loving guy. <laughs> I mean, this guy is really hilarious. Like, at the scene where he arrives at Napford Station on Spencer, it's like, ooh, celebration! Don't worry, I'll let you all get back. <laughs> 
And, and then where the brass band is playing the engine roll call. I really wish it was the classic theme, though, but, well, you can't get what you want. And where they're all playing, you know, it's like... I cannot stop. This movie is so funny. All right, so, yeah, like, that scene was hilarious. And, like, I agree with what Buster the Steamroller said, that I think it would be funny if, you know, seeing an episode with him and Dowager Hat would be really worth the price of entertainment. Yeah, so... So far, Sir Robert R.M.B. is one of the best human characters we have ever seen so far. And now we'll get to the new engines. First off is Sir Robert R.M.B.'s private narrow-gauge engine, Millie. A French narrow-gauge engine voiced by Miranda Rayson. Now, Miranda Rayson did a really good job voicing her. I mean, yes, I'm actually surprised the fact that she's actually French. I mean, I'm so glad they were actually able to get other engines engine ethnicities. Hmm. British, Scottish, Irish, American, Spanish, and I mean not well, Hispanic, and now French. <laughs> that is awesome. I mean, I love her French accent. Oh, excuse me for a second. Sorry about that. I had to go to the restroom. Alright, so, yeah, I gotta say, this character is awesome. I mean, like, she's so sweet and bubbly. I mean, her model is really, I mean, it's not really one of my favorites, but it's still a really good model. I mean, I mean, I love hearing that French accent of hers. I mean, I like her personality. And, of course, the excuse, you know, that Andrew Brenner wrote in that Millie hasn't been seen for a while because she'd been locked up in her shed while the Earl was, you know, traveling the world. Good excuse. Yeah, I could, I could buy it. <laughs> though I would comment about her whistle, though, which, of course, obviously is Lady's Whistle from Thomas and the Magic Railroad. But, oh well. I mean, even though it's Lady's, for some reason, it sort of works for her, yeah. So, yeah, Millie's a great character. Now we'll get to Connor and Caitlin. Two streamlined engines voiced by... Jonathan Forbes, and Rebecca O'Mara. I gotta say, these two, well, actually, not one of my, well, they are kind of, but they aren't really characters I would focus on. And to be honest, I really felt like, you know, season 17, where the episode Calm Down Caitlin or Bill or Ben, you know, was the better introduction for them. But does it, but do I, but am I saying these characters are unlikable? Hell no. These characters, these guys are really likable. I like their personalities of how, you know, really friendly they are, but if, except for the fact that Caitlyn can be a little energetic, they are amazing. In fact, seeing how fast they're going, and even though that the fact that they have a little bit of an Irish accent, because, well, they were voiced by Jonathan Forbes and Rebecca O'Mara, who are from Ireland, and, and I'm not being racist here, sorry. And, like, I'm actually... You, I mean, the voices work for them anyway. I mean, they're really good. I mean, their models are spectacular. And I mean, I even like their coaches, too. Alright, so now that I got that out of the way, now we'll get to the main attraction. Steven the Rocket. Steven is probably my favorite character in the movie. Yeah. I mean, not only just for the fact that he's... That, of course, he is Stevenson's rocket, but, of course, his personality, too. I mean, for the fact that he's just like any old engine. He's wise, he's friendly, very enthusiastic, but also, at the same time, has a, a huge amount of knowledge due to the fact that he has lived for so many years, and also his sense of humor. I mean, like I said in the previous part, Steven, this character, is really funny. I mean, really, he just is. I mean, this guy, like, you know, the earlier joke I brought up, you know, where, like, they're turning me into an airplane. Really? No, that is one of my favorite jokes. And another one of my favorite jokes is where he meets up with Diesel and Paxton at Brendam Docks. That scene was funny. It's like, like, Diesel's like, out of the, no, I'll just do the CJ voice. Out of the way, stinky Stevie. We have work to do. So do I, Mr. Oily, <laughs> and then Paxton's like, 
He's Mr. Oily. <laughs> that joke was also pretty funny. <laughs> Mr. Oily. <laughs> I cannot stop laughing. All right. Yeah, and the guy who did the voice of Steven is Bob Golding. And I gotta say, Golding had really done a good job at doing the voice of one of the most oldest engines ever. I mean, I love his personality. I even like, you know, how the fact that he's really not that strong, he's really not that powerful, he's really not that fast, but at the same time is a really good friend and whose personality can make up for, you know, his flaws. But because I agree, he's awesome. And before you ask about the funnel part, I actually prefer, you know, his newer funnel, the white one with, you know, his, you know, that gold, you know, rim, whatever the rim is called on the funnel. <laughs> All right. So Stephen is one of the best, and I actually wanted to bring this up. Something I just, I just want to bring up. Like when I also saw Stephen, I was thinking to myself, "Hmm, this is like Stepney again, isn't it?" Yeah, and I actually agree. Remember, you know, do you guys remember, you know, in the Railway series, and of course in season four with Stepney, where you know you had an engine based off the actual engine. Examples: Stepney, Wilbert, Flying Scotsman, where they would show up and. Visit the island of Sodor? Of course you do. And this episode actually reminded me of it. And even though the fact that Stevenson's, that Stevens' design is not exactly accurate to, you know, the actual Stevenson's rocket, I mean, it's still really good. I mean, hey, they had to give him a face somehow. <laughs> yeah, so, so far, Steven is the awesomest and probably even one of my favorite characters in this movie. Now, before we end this part... Yeah, I think I'll talk about the rest in part three. Yeah, before we get on, like, there's one character who, of course, does return from the classic series. Well, from, mostly from season six. And that is none other than Jack, the front loader. Yeah, hold on. Yep, this guy. Jack is finally back. I'm so glad. Jack is my favorite pack member, and I'm not really a big fan of the pack, but I... No, but, yeah, they're so good. Hell, I really wish it, at least mo a majority of the pack, like Alfie, Oliver, the pack... Ugh. Seriously, why do they have to name that excavator Oliver? I mean, we already have a good Oliver. The Great Western, <laughs> never mind. Uh, Kelly, Isabella, and those stupid dump truck bastards, Max and Marjorie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can help myself there. I mean, seeing Jack again is awesome. I mean, I even love the voice that Stephen Keenman had actually given him in this. David Menken, eh, he's okay. But Stephen Keenman really did an awesome job at doing the voice of Jack. And his design has also changed. Now from a circular to a now rectangular. And surprisingly, even though I'm a longtime Thomas fan, and I never thought I'd say this, but I actually prefer the CGI version of Jack. No, I'm not kidding. The CGI version of Jack is probably the better of the two. I mean, the original model of Jack, mm, I don't hate it. I mean, it was, you know, fun, you know, while it lasted. But now, this is even better. Yeah, so, welcome back, Jack. <laughs> Jack is back. <laughs> Yeah, so that pretty much ends it there. The other characters you're definitely going to be seeing are, of course, your Top and Hat, Henry, Edward, Emily, Toby, Diesel, Paxton, Cranky, um, who else? Harold, and Belle, who, sorry to say, I really don't care about that much. Um, Scarloe, Reneus, Luke, um, I can't think of, oh, and Hero. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Like, I can't really think of the top of my head, but, no, well, I'll just end there. Yeah, so, stay tuned for part three, you guys. Be back in a flash.